Statistics and research methods need not be intimidating for students. I provide an example here to explain the difference between mean, median, and mode and give some examples. So let's say hypothetically that our data set is this list of numbers here. 1, 1, 1, 2, 4, 4, 7, 8, 99. That's our data set. Let's say hypothetically this is representative of the number of strokes it takes to get the ball in the hole in a, in a certain hole of golf. I'm not a golfer. If you are, you'll be able to tell that I'm not from this explanation. But hypothetically, let's say it took three different people got a hole in one, one person it took two strokes, two people it took four strokes, and so on. And then I was playing and I did terrible and it took 99 tries to get it in. The mean is the average. Mean means average. So you would calculate average, pull up my calculator here, by adding up all the numbers and then dividing by the number of numbers. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 4 plus 7 plus 8 plus 99. That gives us 127 total, and there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 numbers. So we're going to divide by 9 for a total of 14.11111, rounding it to 14. So let's say on average that means that the average number of strokes that it takes to be successful in this hole of golf is 14 strokes. Now, you're probably realizing that that's not really a, it's accurate mathematically. I did the correct formula to find the average, so there's no problems mathematically, but it's not really a very helpful summary of this data. So you can see that most people took eight strokes or less. Most of the people were in this range under 10 and there was just one person that was an outlier. It's an extreme number that really doesn't fit the data set. It's very, very different, very unusual, not what you would expect to see. So because there's that outlier, it skews the data to a higher average, even though on average, if you're just using kind of colloquial terms, you'd expect people to be in a lower range it bumps up to 14 because there's this very high number. So what some people will do in, in research or statistics, depending on the data set, you might remove an outlier. So if I did that, it would be 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 4 plus 7 plus 8 equals just 28. And now that I've taken off one of the numbers, there's only 8 in the data set instead of 9. So I'm going to divide that by 8 and get 3.5. So if we were to exclude the outlier, which is an atypical result, and just focus here on this data set, then our mean or our average would be 3.5, which in looking at these numbers makes a lot more sense. If you were saying, how difficult is this hole of golf or this round, whatever, you would say, oh, on average, people get it in, you know, 3, three to 4 strokes versus 14, which is probably not really an accurate, um, it's an accurate average of that data set, but not as helpful and meaningful in practical terms. Another way of exploring data is the median. That is the middle number in the data set. If you were to line up all of the data points in order, so it has to be from least to greatest, not just a random order, but if you line them all up in order like they are now, it would be the middle number. What number is in the very middle of the data? If it's an even number, it's going to be an average of the two middle numbers. But in this case, we have a nice odd number. There's nine in the, in the full data set. So that would be the fifth one is in the middle. So the number in the very middle is here, four. So four is the median. So it's the middle number, which kind of got you to a similar, right? We found out that if we excluded that outlier, it would be a three and a half average. So median is similar to that four. And that is a nice way of saying if you took all nine of the golfers 
what would be, you know, the median score, um, the median number of strokes. In this case, with this particular data set, that gets you a better idea of what the middle of the road player would score. Then we have mode, which is the most common. So I think mode, most, most common number in a data set. In this case, number one is the most common. There are three different golfers who got a hole in one, whereas two people did it in four. So mode is the most. So technically, if you were to you know, randomize this, the most likely outcome would actually be a hole in one if this is you know, a representative sample. So hopefully that is a helpful overview of mean, median, and mode. This is used in the real world a lot. So just as an example, if you are looking at average household income in the United States or in a certain city, you might talk about the average income and that could be really helpful. But if you had uh, several people who made no income and then you know maybe one person who is a billionaire and made millions of dollars in a year, that millionaire might be kind of like this 99 that could skew the data beyond what is a typical range. And so it would be helpful to see the average, the true average, but it might be more helpful to look at the median household income. If you lined up 10 people, what would, you know, from lowest income to highest annual income, what would the middle person be earning? Depending again on the data set, the median or the average might be a better representative of the, the data. You could also look at mode. So for example, if you wanted to know what a salary was at a certain company, say there was, you know, a really simplified company that had, you know, 10 entry level workers and then the CEO and the CEO is making bank, lots of money, but all the entry level workers are all making $40,000 a year. The mode would be 40,000 and not the average, which would be skewed up because of the one CEO's higher salary. So hopefully that is a helpful review and good luck on any studying and math you are doing.